Welcome to Heaven Awaits. My name is Lee, and I narrate the near-death experiences of those who have died and have seen the other side. If you enjoy these videos, please consider hitting the thumbs up, subscribe, and bell icons to be notified of new content. Doing so is free, and it does help the channel grow. Get comfortable, grab a cup of coffee or tea, and let's dive into today's experience. This happened to me in 1978. I am sad to admit that I was born into a Catholic family, but my parents never totally believed or converted. My mom was pregnant with me as her second child. She was eight months pregnant, riding a bicycle, and had an accident. I was born almost on an ambulance bed in 1971. At a very early age, I understood why I was not a very welcomed baby. When I was three years old, I was a very talkative little girl and had witnessed some events. I had the tendency to speak my mind and was very close to my dad. I mentioned to him what I had seen. I was so innocent at the time, I didn't know why that had caused so much trouble. My life took a sad turn. I had to act normal while my dad was present, but I was being punished by my own mother. I was forced to keep silent. I thought this was what normal was, so I always tried to be happy and prayed to God that my mom would show love to me. In December 1978, my mother was upset with my dad for not arriving home soon enough. It was a very cold winter, and we were poor. My mom wanted me and my two brothers to go to sleep. She put the little Mexican grill, called a brasero, and placed it in the middle of the room. Then she lit the charcoal. She covered the bottom of the door with newspaper so no air could come in from outside. I felt like something hit my chest, and I got a bad feeling that she was about to do something terrible. She was incredibly upset and acting irrationally, so I asked her to stop what she was doing. All she did was scream at me to obey her and go to sleep. She locked the door and the windows. The last thing I remember was trying to sleep in bed next to my brother. I was feeling so scared that my heart was beating so fast. I could feel the sound of my heart all over my body, in my head, my ears, and even my feet. I started to cry. I covered my mouth with my left hand and assumed a fetal position. I closed my eyes and recited prayers. I thought, please God, don't let me die without having my first communion. I want to feel the sensation of receiving your body and your blood at least once. The fire started, and I remember a weird feeling rising in my throat. I opened my eyes, and I saw a black cloud all over the room. I started coughing, and my head was so heavy. I felt dizzy, and that was the last thing I was aware of. The room had quickly filled with toxic smoke. We all suffered from carbon monoxide poisoning and lost consciousness. Then, I saw a beautiful light on top of my bed. I will describe it as a golden figure that was calmly radiating light. The figure it extended its left arm and pulled at my hand, so I got up and surveyed the room. Smoke was everywhere. My little brother was crying, and my mother and other brother were sleeping. I tried to run to the door, but my movements felt like they were in slow motion. I was following this beautiful beam of light. I reached the door, and the golden figure passed through. I remember I tried to open the door, but it was locked. I was floating and wanted to come down to reach the door, but it was impossible. I then saw the beautiful beam of light outside on the patio. It was floating up, and I moved his left hand so I could follow him. He was more beautiful outside. This was like the Jesus images I saw in the Bible. His face was shining, and he was smiling. His eyes were so deep. I felt that he could send me lights of love. I wished to stay like that forever. It was the most amazing experience of my whole life. It was like he was taking me to heaven with him and I was happy to follow him. I then came back for a moment. I remembered my mom and my brothers, so I couldn't just leave. I asked him to please save them, and he smiled. I flew through the door. The two of us went up to the next floor. We were outside the door of my neighbors. She was a 60-year-old lady who was very close to my family. I recall trying to scream her name, but I had fallen mute. I tried to pull the doorknob, and it was impossible. I then turned my face to the Lord and silently begged with my heart for God to save my mom and my brothers, even if it meant my death. What happened next was a miracle. I saw Jesus knocking on her door three times. She came out of the house and asked who knocked. She did not see anyone and was under the impression that this was a prank committed by the neighborhood kids, 
so she went back inside her house. I tried to ask her to come downstairs and save us. I saw the Lord Jesus closing his eyes, positioning his right hand in the air, and then placing his left hand on the shining heart that was on the center of his chest. He then touched the doorknob, and it opened. At that moment, my neighbor turned around and started toward the door. She then ran down the stairs that led to my house because she could smell the smoke from her house. She started to scream so loudly that a few people woke up and came to help. I saw her knocking on our door and screaming my mother's name so loudly, but there was no response. She then tried to force the door open, but it was so heavy that she couldn't open it alone. Then, her son came down, and she asked him to break the glass window in the door. He took a piece of wood and broke at the window. He was able to unlock the door from inside. They opened the door, grabbed two towels, and took the little burning brasero outside to the patio. I saw them reaching the bedroom and trying to carry out my little brother and my mom. They took them outside, and I begged for them to hurry and bring my other brother. I saw them going to my bed, and I was expecting to see my brother there, scared and wide awake, but my heart froze over. I saw my brother and myself lying down on the bed, unconscious. They had to carry my brother outside, and then me. We were lying down on the floor. My mother was already gaining consciousness while another woman was trying to give her water. My brothers and I were on the patio floor. People were performing CPR. Everything felt like a movie. Once I regained a little consciousness, I turned onto my right shoulder to thank the Lord Jesus, but he was gone. The last thing I remember was feeling a very strange force inside my body. My soul was filling my body again, so I opened my eyes. I was trying to get up despite the coughing and dizziness. I had a massive headache, sore eyes, and a sore throat. I knew that this wasn't a dream and that everything was real. I tried to get up to look at everything around me so I could observe every detail. Everybody was regaining consciousness. My brothers were crying. My neighbor asked my mom why she did such a crazy thing by lighting the basero with no air in the room. My mom replied with nonsense. I tried to say something but my mom's eyes were already staring at me and I felt afraid to say anything. A man who was there had some kind of nursing knowledge and said that we needed to cleanse all the toxic smoke and carbon monoxide from our bodies. We were poisoned by it, and it was very dangerous. They made us drink milk, and then a man lifted each one of us children and spun us in a little circle in order to force us to vomit. My mom did not want to take us to an emergency room or any clinic, so I knew that it was a miracle that Lord Jesus saved us. My neighbor never knew who was knocking at her door. Then. I saw a little light in the corner. It looked like golden halos. I walked towards that light, still feeling dizzy. As I got closer, I clearly saw a beautiful angel with a bright sword in his right hand. He pointed down with his sword to the little grill that still was burning while saying penance three times. Then he told me to take the plastic bowl, fill it with water, put some black charcoal inside, and then drink. I did. After I drank the water, the angel told me to grab some burned ashes and make a cross on my forehead with them. He said that those were signs of penance and obedience. The water was the sign of purification. The ashes represent our Lord burning with his fire of justice, and this was a symbol of the love and promise from the encounter with Jesus. I will remember forever that I was marked by our Lord as his loving child. Afterward, he told me that I was going to be fine but different. He said that I would see things that others could not see and that I must be humble and good in my heart. He told me to pray more for people who deeply needed prayers, especially for the innocent children who were killed in the womb. I could not totally comprehend it at the time, but as the years progressed, I felt as though I finally understood what he meant. That does it for this experience. As always, let me know what you thought in the comments section below. Until next time, stay safe and continue to be blessed.